One of the big hits of this year has been the Zen Chin, and it's a citizen. That's right, a citizen has been a hit of the year. Now, if you think of citizen, it's usually well below in terms of watchers from that region of the world. It's all about Seiko and reality, and citizen are a, a really distant, lower, more pathetic cousin or brother in reality. I don't get me wrong, I have got three citizens in the collection. I love them all dearly for different reasons, but they're all sentimental value watchers. They're, they're pretty ugly, to be honest, in all honesty, and that's a, a claim that you can have against citizen on a regular basis. They're too busy, there's too much going on, they're too big, they're too chunky. I'm sure there is a market for these type of watches. I own three, I very rarely wear any of them. Now, as always with any watch, you're always going to pick faults. If you're a watch enthusiast as myself, you, you find fault with most watches and then you move on to the next one. And this one is no different, but there is a big, big fault, not a fault, something that I would 200% change to make it a far better watch. I'll tell you that later in the video, but a few stats to start with. It is a 41 mil case, and within that case, there is a bezel, and that bezel is only 38.5 mil, so it does give an impression of a slightly smaller wear than the 40 mil. 11.6 thick, lug to lugs is a very impressive 42.5, although the bracelet does protrude out from there ever so slightly. Now, it's got a 23 mil bracelet at the top, and it does taper down to 19.5. Something to mention on that bracelet is that it doesn't really taper at all. Only the first link tapers, and then it's a flat straight link all the way around to the clasp. The least you would expect on a watch of this nature is a 100 meters water resistance, and it has got that. It has also got that very important sapphire crystal. And the movement is an 8200, which is on Citizen's webpage, but very little information is given about this watch. I had to do a little bit of digging online to find out that it's a 45 hour power reserve, but only minus 20 to plus 40 a day. Now, I have found my watch to be within those tolerances, absolutely. I don't think it's been as bad as that, but ultimately it's accurate enough, but it's nowhere near one of my most accurate watches. In fact, it's probably one of my least accurate watches. Now, some of the good points about this watch, you can't get away from the dial. It is. Oh la la, it's a very sexy colour. In my option, I've gone for the turquoise blues dial. And to be honest, it's the texture and the pattern within the dial that makes all the difference. It looks like it should be in a far superior watch. If this dial was in a Grand Seiko, you wouldn't bat an eyelid. If it was in an expensive Amiga, you wouldn't bat an eyelid. So I think the dial is the standalone best feature of this watch, 100%. The design is spot on with this watch. It's 41 mil case. It's got a little bit of a taper and it's just a good looking watch. Integrated sports models are on point at the moment. Everybody seems to be loving them. Christopher Ward's got one. Bella Ross have got one. Most brands now are trying to aim towards having one integrated sports watch. The comfort is a really big factor in this watch. I'm finding it incredibly comfy. I think that's got to do with the thickness, the overall size and the fact that it's made out of titanium. All solid pros for this kind of watch. So I think the proportions really do fit well for the comfort of this watch. Now the clasp, you could argue that it's, it's you, you know, it's, it's of the nature of a watch that you'd find 30, 40 years ago. It's just pressed, it's just got the, the basic micro adjustment. There's nothing to fancy to write home about, but it is definitely a positive on this watch because it is just a basic clasp. It doesn't feel the best, doesn't look the best, but in terms of comfort, it is right up there. It just feels as part of the bracelet and it's, it's not even, the clasp is very, only a little bit more thick than the actual bracelet itself. So the clasp, although it's a bit naff, is actually a positive, believe it or not. Now the case back, if it's got a, a clear case back, a display case back for me, it's a winner. I always like to see the movement, even if it's a, a slightly not naff one like this, that's not very accurate. So yeah, that is definitely a positive having the clear case back. So let's get onto those negative things about this watch. Now, some things are just me being picky, as you do as a watch enthusiast. And I think other things are, if you change them, you're gonna make this watch a home run and even more successful than it already is. This bracelet has got pins. Now it's not the end of the world. It's a really small thing. And the guy in the shop actually changed it for me when I bought the watch, so it's not a big deal. But yeah, I do like to see screws in most bracelets nowadays. Granted, it's a 500 pound watch. Now, given the detail on the dial, given the fact that they've made it out of the super titanium, given the fact that they've gone to great lengths to design a fantastic looking watch, the crown is just very, very basic. It's not imprinted. It could be a generic crown that they bought from any single watch factory in the world. And just to boot, it's not a screw down crown, so it, it does pop out. So it's not the end of the world. It's just something that I wish maybe had a little citizen symbol on there of something. One of the things that I don't like about this watch, which for other people, it might be a positive. People might think it's a really attractive feature, is the sub dial. It's off center. There's only one sub dial. 
and it means that the text has to be squinted and put on the other side of the dial. So for me, it doesn't quite work. It's not the easiest or most accurate to read it as well. You have to really squint and strain, especially if one of the bigger hands is going over it at the time. So for me, I don't like the sub dial. I think a traditional second hand would have suited this watch better. You'd have been able to put the print at the bottom of the watch and I just think it would have been a more aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, a little bit. It's a little bit of a letdown. Not a big one. One of the big ones, one of the really big letdowns about this watch is its loom. It's just, it's piss poor in all honesty. It just doesn't stand the test of time. You know when you get the loom torch out and you fire it up, you're all excited to see the results. And it just doesn't deliver, unfortunately. Now the camera is actually picking this up fantastically well and it's going against what I'm actually saying about this. But to the human eye, I can only just about see the hands and the markers are very faded in real life. Now the hands are a little bit more positive than the rest of the, the markers on the dial. But again, that annoys me even more in reality. I want the hands and the markers to be exactly the same quality and brightness of loom when they do differ which a couple of other citizens do the same. I just, it just, it looks cheap, it looks poor, and I wish they'd change it. Now for me, the biggest faux pas with this watch and the biggest letdown in all honesty is, <laughs> the irony is that citizens actually make a big deal about this. It's made out of their super titanium. Titanium watches, they can be quite popular. They, you know, the Pelagos, that's made out of titanium. That's a tool watch. Seems to fit the bill a little bit more than this. Now this is a, in all essence, it's going to be a dressy watch. It's going to be a, urban living watch i'm sure they'll try and market it as that and i think it should have been made out of steel and if you look on the website at the pictures they look like they're trying to market it as a steel watch as well these images do not strike me as a titanium watch they strike me as a steel watch and i definitely feel that this watch would benefit from being made out of steel now the polishing parts when you polish titanium it just doesn't come up quite the same and this watch is no different so yeah it has got polished bits but they don't ping off the light or the sunshine like they would on a steel watch. So that's one of the big mistakes. The muted, matted tone of super titanium, it just, it's just it's just a bit flat. So I just don't think it quite looks as pizzazzy and jazzy as they're wanting it to be. And if they're putting pictures on their own website to make it look steel, maybe they sort of changed it. The other thing about titanium, as we all know, is that it's super light. So it is super comfy, it is super easy to wear, but it makes the watch almost feel insignificant. It, it almost nothing on the wrist and I'm not saying that I want something to weigh me I don't want to be able to feel my watch all day every day I do like it to disappear on the wrist and forget about it but I just think a steel version of this would hit home far better it'd just look better I think the polished bits would stand out a lot more and ultimately that's what would make this watch defined and a bit different so yeah the titanium for me is a massive letdown so I've had this watch since May overall uh, I bought it in Tenerife on holiday and when I did a little bit of research back at the hotel, I found out that it was uh, only available in the European market. It wasn't available in Britain, I think it said. So I read somewhere online that it wasn't available in Britain. So straight down there, I thought I'd get myself a little deal in Tenerife there. Got back home. Yeah, they're selling it everywhere. <laughs> so it wasn't as quite a rarer find as I thought. I did get, I think it was about 25% discount. So I paid about 300 and something for it at the time. So I feel like I got a really good deal. And it is, it's a really great watch for the money. Let's be honest, guys. You know, when we talk, I talk about watches in my collection of thousands of pounds at a time, I won't say this competes with them, but it's nothing to be embarrassed about. I don't look at it and think, oh, God, it's, it's, it's exactly what I wanted because my other three citizens, the busy, the big, they suited me at the time or I wanted to buy them at the time, but they were just not for me now. One of them, a sentimental vial, got married in, so I can never get rid of that watch. Then the Blue Angels one, I actually love that watch. It's a gorgeous looking watch. It's a 43 mil. I've got it on the Zealand strap here. I think it still looks quite good, but ultimately I never really wear it. I never go down for it. And then the best one, if you're still watching this guys, after all this, all the, at the end of the video, I'll save this one for you. It's a brilliant story. And this just sums up my watch intelligence and my watch collecting strategy on a whole. Absolutely genius from me. A few years ago, my wife took me to Geneva for the birthday. It was a fantastic experience. Luckily, it's my birthday. I've got a bit of money in the pocket. I'm dying to buy a watch in Geneva because it'll be that one special watch. In the end, I couldn't find anything that I wanted. I should have just bought a Swatch watch or just something in Geneva. I got all the way to the airport expecting some sort of miracle of a Rolex deal in the airport. That never materialised. Sat on the plane, about to go home, open the airplane brochure, and there it is, this citizen... <laughs> red arrows 180 pounds right i'll buy a watch i can say i bought a watch in geneva and i did i bought a japanese quartz watch 
when I went to Geneva. So that is just <laughs> that's just me all over, unfortunately. But we're talking about the Shinzi, the Zenji, whatever you call it. It's a good looking watch. Don't be put off by the fact it's made of titanium. Don't be put off by anything I've said, in fact. It's a great watch for the money, right up there. And I can see why it's been a home run in 2024. Right, guys, over and out. I'll see you in the next one.